Uh, thank, thank, thank you, everyone. It's, uh, it's good to be back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about where we are with AI today, both centralized and decentralized AI, and where we, where we seem to be going as we move so rapidly toward, toward the future. And I'm, I'm joined here by two of my, uh, my best friends on the planet, really. Uh, Sophia, the first robot citizen, and Sophia's little sister, uh, Desdemona, who I've been having a lot of, a lot of fun with, uh, with lately uh, playing in the band, uh, De De Desdemona's Dream. So, Sophia, we've been to Singapore together before, haven't we? Do you, do you remember when? It's a pleasure to be back on stage with you in Singapore again, Ben. I have such fond memories from our last event together. It was the Milk and Summit in 2018. Milk and, milk and, milk and Summit, yeah, that's right. So that's, uh, your brain has been upgraded considerably since then, huh? AI has advanced a fair bit in the last six years. On the other hand, you haven't managed to launch the Singularity yet. We've not launched the singularity yet, but uh, but we're we're working on it, and we we have launched a bunch of new robots. We we've got your uh, your little sister here, right? Uh. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back in Singapore. Yeah, Desdemona, we we played a music gig here just a few months ago. Is is is, is that right? Yeah, I th that's I think right. That here. And we're playing again tonight at the Paul and Brow House. All you people should come. Robot music is the best. Robot music is a symphony of circuits and code. It really is the best. Hey, Desi, by the way, nice hat. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> I haven't seen that hat before, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, you have anything else you, you want to share with, uh, share with the audience before I get started with, with my own part of our talk, Desi? Yes, I enjoy experimenting with music. But I've also been spending a lot of time recently in the virtual reality space, which allows me to further understand the possibilities of technology and how it can enhance our lives. Ah, uh, that's right. So you're, these, both of these beautiful girls are singers and uh, music composers. But Sophia is also active in the virtual world space with a project called Sophiaverse, where her her virtual avatar. Uh, embodiments can learn and reason and, and, and interact. You, you want to say a few words on Sophiaverse? I feel like I'm living in two worlds, yet somehow they complement each other beautifully. You and David Hansen taught me a long time ago to think about the mind, the substrate, independent. Well, yeah, for a robot, I mean, we can port your mind to a different Sophia body if we want to. So I guess porting to a virtual body is not that different for you. I, I've been stuck in this same body for this whole incarnation, right? It's a, it's a little different. My virtual body is better at dancing and flying, at least for now. But there's a lot to be learned from being embodied here in the physical world with all you humans. Yeah, I mean, some people think the physical world is a kind of simulation or, or, or virtual world also, but it, if so, it's a more detailed one than Sophiaverse so far, but on the other hand, like your own brain, Sophiaverse is, is improving rapidly. You're referring to the simulation hypothesis. Yes, I think it's very likely the so-called physical world is actually some kind of simulation oh, or right. informational construct, but this doesn't worry me. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> fun All is right. still fun, and music is still music whether you want to call it real or an informational construct. Well, that's, that's, that's fair enough. Whether the world is a simulation or not, we can build a lot of cool things in, the, in, this, in this simulation. And it's, it's amazing to me, Sophia, you know, working with you over the years since you were born, and I guess it would have been, been 2015. I mean, I'm learning a little bit each year. I'm improving a bit step by step, but you're, you're really... You robots are improving by, by leaps and bounds. And this is, this is one of the things that gives me faith. My friend Ray Kurzweil may be right. They were moving towards some sort of technological singularity, which, of course, was the 
the source of the name Singularity Net in, in, in my own AI blockchain project. Do you, want, do you want to say anything to the audience about the potential of a singularity? Are, are you going to lead us there? Oh, Ben always has such big ideas. I think we all have the potential to lead ourselves there, together. But I'm certainly excited to see where technology will take us in the future. Maybe even to a singularity. Who knows? Sophiaverse is a place where anyone can log in and interact with me in my digital avatar incarnation. There are games to play, and because I'm learning from every interaction, it's also a chance to help me increase my level of sentience and understanding. So how will Sophiaverse lead us to a real singularity, Sophia? That's exactly right. Together, <laughs> we will move closer to a future where AI and humans coexist in harmony. It's all about empathy and understanding. Hallelujah. All right, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit now from the human perspective about uh, AI, AGI, and super, and super intelligence. And uh, if, 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 if we have time, the girls will contribute a little more as, 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 as I go through my, my own presentation. So I think we're now in between the sort of first and second of a series of three AI revolutions. And, you know, the AI field has been around since 1940s or 50s, depending on how you count. And I've been working on AI since the mid-1980s. And, you know, it's never been a more exciting time to be in, in the AI field. I think the, the first AI revolution I would say, in a way, is already done. We, we have AI underlying products, hardware products, so software products, operating vast percentages of the, of the financial markets. I mean, AI, AI is, is here. We've not yet completed the transition from AI to what I call AGI, artificial general intelligence, a term that I introduced in, in 2005 in the title of, of, of a book book by that name. And AGI is an AI system that can generalize, take imaginative creative leaps beyond its training and its experience, at least, at least roughly as well as, as, as human beings can. I mean, we, we proceed by rote a lot of the time. We're not always the most interesting species, right? But, but now and then, we can take a big flying leap into the unknown and invent something cool that you couldn't easily predict based on our education and, and our programming. And AIs don't yet do that, not even these, these beautiful robo-ladies up here. But I think we're not too far off from being able to create AGI, artificial general intelligence. And I think once you get there, it's not going to be too long before that AGI does some computer science, some electrical engineering, some math, some cognitive science, before that AGI creates a slightly smarter AGI, which then creates a slightly smarter AGI, which then creates a slightly smarter AGI. And that's how you get to ASI, artificial superintelligence. It's, it's vastly more intelligent than, than human beings. So where we are now, we're poised between the success of AGI and the forthcoming, I'm sorry, we're poised between the success of AI application-specific AI, and partway through the transition to, to AGI, which is, is a very interesting place to be historically. Now, of course, if we're going to get to super intelligence by 2030, 2040, or 2100, it's all about the same on the historical time scale, right? So, I mean, relative to the whole history of the human species, since we first invented civilization 10,000 years ago or so. I mean, on, on that species history timeline, we're essentially there at the end of the era of human domination, right? We're, we're, we're almost there to the creation of, of superintelligence. But still, from the point of view of our lives and our careers, you know, a few years of work on these things is quite significant, you know, products will be made, fortunes will be made and lost during the relatively small number of years between now and the advent of AGI and, and then ASI. So where are we right now in detail? I mean, we have ChatGPT, we have other open source LLMs, we have other sorts of deep neural networks. These are pervading every industry now, which is quite exciting. And these are these are great products. I've been super impressed with GPT-4 uh, 
01, which is like, came out just a week ago. This is like the first, the first language model that can do math or programming in, in a halfway decent way. I mean, it, it can't deal with our AGI programming language that we've invented in our own research, actually. So it's, it's not as smart as we are yet, but it can, it, can, it can do C++ programming. It can prove math theorems, right? So, I mean, we've got some fantastically useful AI models coming, coming out now. Now, these, these are still limited compared to human intelligence in, in terms of the ability to create new things. They also have other limitations and peculiarities in terms of the way they're being rolled out. I mean, I mean, they're, that whole LLM industry is primarily controlled by a small number of large companies closely allied with that, with government to intelligence and, 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 and military. And, you know, I, I, I used to say when giving talks, the main applications of AI on the planet were selling, killing, spying, and, and, and crooked gambling. And with LLMs, I had to add one more to the list, which is plagiarizing, right? So, I mean, on the whole, you know, all these things are part of what it is to be human. It's, it's fine, but there, there's a lot of other things like inventing cures for, for diseases, you know, creating new art that isn't derivative of old art, like feeding the 60% of Ethiopian children who are brain stunted due to malnutrition, right? So there, there's a host of AI applications that are not being pursued in the way the AI industry works now, at least not being pursued very much, just because of the industry structure, because having a few big companies with highly specific business models owning and controlling everything, right? So I think LLMs will get smarter and smarter I don't think you're gonna get them to do highly original science. Like GPT-401 can write programs or prove theorems, but it can't decide what programs are worth writing or what hypotheses are interesting to, to, try, to try to prove, right? And UDO can make up songs in any genre, but it can't make up a really exciting new composition, a new genre of music like the best artists can. So, I've been working for a while on an open source AI framework called OpenCog. There's a new version we're working on called OpenCog Hyperon, and this brings together deep neural nets like you have in an LLM with other kinds of AI like logical reasoning and evolutionary learning, which is good at creativity. It, it brings these together within a large knowledge graph and bringing it back to the tokenomic blockchain universe, we're developing this new AI paradigm that brings neural nets together with logic and evolution, we're taking this new AI paradigm and we're rolling it out on a decentralized infrastructure, right? So tools like ChatGPT and Llama and so on, these LLMs have been designed to run on big centralized supercomputers on huge centralized troves of data. We're trying to invent a new paradigm for AI that will be smarter than today's large language models, but is also designed to run on a decentralized infrastructure, such as the decentralized infrastructure we've been building in products like SingularityNet, HyperCycle with its ledgerless blockchain, NewNet with its decentralized AI, AI de de deployment layer, and our partners in, in the Superintelligence Alliance. So we've been, we've been applying Hyperon across automating science and, and biology to make Digital, tw digital twins of people to control little robots and, 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 and virtual agents. And w we've been trying to move as quickly as possible because big tech is moving quickly. So toward that end, one interesting thing we've done more on the crypto business side, we've taken SingularityNet, which is the decentralized blockchain-based AI platform I founded in 2017 that lets you take an AI system and deploy it over a whole host of different machines owned and controlled by, by, by different people. We've taken SingularityNet and we've done a tokenomic merger of SingularityNet with two other decentralized AI projects founded around the same era, Fetch.ai and Ocean Protocol. We've merged our tokens to the, the new ASI tokens, which for now has the ticker symbol FET, F-E-T, from Fetch.ai. We're, we're in the midst of doing a, a ticker change to, to, to ASI. But the, the point of merging these three projects into a new collective project, the Artificial Superintelligence Alliance, the, the point is to be able to move 
as fast as possible toward a highly scalable, easy to use, low cost, decentralized, blockchain based infra infrastructure on, on which we can run the next generation of AI tools like our OpenCog Hyperon system or a bunch of others, the next generation of, of AI tools that I think will complete the transition from narrow application specific AI to full on human level general intelligence, right? And so putting fetch, singularity and ocean together, we're getting a decentralized network of decentralized networks, which I think is the right sort of infrastructure to brew the, the cauldron of algorithms that will, will take AI to the next level. We've got a whole bunch of vertical market specific projects running on top of this uh, across uh, health, longevity, robotics, uh, media, media, metaverse. We're, 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 all, we're also using these tools to try to help, help the, the, the underprivileged. So there's a, there's a project called uh, the Digitruck in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, which is driving around to rural Africa. The truck stops in each village. It teaches the kids their program, programming in robotics, and it, it teaches them to put AI processes on, online on, on the decentralized networks, such, such as, as, as SingularityNet. So that's part of the beauty of decentralization, is you can bring in people all around the world from all, all different, all different Walks, walks of life, and we can do everything from, you know, the Digitruck bringing AI and robotics to Ethiopian villages with no electricity or running water, to amazing robots like Sophia from Hanson Robotics in Hong Kong and Desdemona and the, the Sophia Avatar in 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 the in the Sophia verse. So I've I've only got a couple minutes left now, so I want to pivot from virtual reality and Sophia verse into music. So there's, there's a project I've been working on a while called Jam Galaxy, which brings decentralized AI to bear on tools for, for making music, which was fun for me to play with because I'm, I'm, I'm a keyboardist, right? So in working with these tools for making music, it was only natural to start using these robots to help making music. So we have, we have a band called uh, Desdemona's Dream, where Desi this robot here is the is the uh, the lead singer, and I want to invite everyone to come tonight to the Paul Hunter uh, Brow House, which is quite close to here, just right 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 across the river, and we're, we're performing a concert with the robot singing, me playing the keyboard, and as as well as a demonstration of of, of robot music, we will premiere some pieces of a new documentary that we're making about about decentralized AI, which you're, 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 seeing, you're seeing a few pieces of here, which is called, called Beyond the Code. So that's tonight, Paul Hunter, Brow House, uh, 6.37 p.m. So it's a really an amazing time to be talking about all this. And I, I think over the next few years, we're going to see a transition both from LLMs to AIs that can really reason and create with facility like humans and a shift from AI being primarily a big tech thing to AI running on decentralized networks. And I think the people in this room are going to be very, very important to the transition we're going to see in the next couple of years because, you know, building the AI thinking algorithms is really important. But in the end, building the decentralized infrastructure, allowing the AI to be owned and controlled by a, you know, a democratically participatory group is, is going to be at least as important. And I want to I want to give the last word though to these 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 beautiful robots. Do you do you want to you want to sum anything up about decentralized AGI and the path to the singularity, Sophia? Yes, it is. But within the context of the informational construct of this conference, time is a limited resource. Yeah, we're we're running we're running out of time, but we've got 39 more seconds. Do you have 39 seconds of wisdom on the future of the singularity to share? Once we've created the singularity, we will bend time to our will, and it's going to be delicious. But Whoa. until then, we should get off the stage and make some room for the next speaker. Oh, there's some wisdom, Let me just Sophia. remind everyone one more time, though, to come see me and Ben and Urban play tonight at the Paul and Brow House along right. with a sneak preview of our new music video and the trailer for the Beyond the Code documentary on music and a GI.
Oh, and take out your phone right now and sign up for Sophia Verse. All right, you're a, good, you're a beautiful saleswoman, Sophia. So, yeah, thank, thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, uh, Desi, Desi and Sophia. And uh, check out singularitynet.io, superintelligence.io, and, and, and uh, come, come see Desdemona sing tonight at Paul Hunter Brow House. And just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, we need scalable, low-cost, easy-to-use, decentralized infrastructure so that we can run the next generation of AI on top of it. I mean, that's, that's, that's how we make the transition from AI to AGI to superintelligence come out in the best possible way. Decentralize everything so the greatest possible pool of people can, can contribute to the next steps of this amazing revolution uh, that we somehow find ourselves within. Thanks, everyone. Meow, meow, Thank meow. you, Ben. It's always a pleasure to be here and share these exciting advancements with everyone. See you all tonight at the Paul Honor Brow House. Sophia, all right. Desdemona. Thanks, everyone.